is a video that I'm going to shoot about putting um, side pullers into your top kits. So I've got some old top kits here, you can see I've got quite a few actually. I painted some white on the end. And these top kits didn't come with side pullers, so I'm going to put a wrap between the bits of tape there that you can see. And um, then I'm going, going to actually fit my own side pullers. I'm going to go through the whole process with you guys. Just thought I'd start off by showing you the setup that I've got here. This is my kitchen table with an old dust sheet. Um, you're going to be put, you're going to be mixing resin and things like that. You don't want to get on your kitchen table. You really don't want to upset the wife. You don't want to have to buy her a new kitchen table. I've got just a couple of bits of two by four just to raise those kits up. I've got ten. I'm probably going to do them in two batches of five because I just don't think I've got. Oops, I just don't think I've got the room in my in my little kitchen. And I'll probably use something like a placemat and just place some placemats sort of either side so that they can't roll off when I'm working on them. But you can use anything you want. Really, what you're looking for is to try and keep it as level as you can. Obviously, there's a bit of liquid. You're adding resin, liquid resin. It's going to run. If you have it on too much of a slope, it'll run one way or the other. Just try and be reasonably level. You ain't going to, you ain't going to go insane. And um, and once you've got a nice little setup like this, because it's going to have to sit for you know at least 24 hours. This process around about 24 hours is best. So you want to find a spot which is dry, clean, warm, and is not going to upset the rest of the household. Okay. So as you can see here, I've already marked out my top kits. Um, that means I've decided what length from the end of my top kit to, to here where I want my puller to be. Um, probably a bit shorter than most people would have it, but my top kits are generally shorter anyway. So I don't want to lose too much length of elastic. I've also already got some side puller top kits and this is where they are. So I want them all to match. So, it's, so that you know I've got it's consistent when I pick up a top kit with a number 13 elastic in it feels the same no matter what so what i'm about to do now is i've just got to sand just lightly sand down between the tapes there's two different types of color of tape there there's nothing special about those it's just that i ran out of um blue masking tape so now i'm about to put some standard masking tape and so it's just masking tape the masking tapes there a to help me mark it out so i find the spot but also you'll find with this resin it really easy for it to sort of just become messy and then it's you know it's visible afterwards so it just keeps it tidy by having this tape and you'll see later on in the process as we go through hopefully i'm not waffling on too much i'm not going to show you me sanding these down next thing you'll see these will already be sanded so this one's one of the top kits you can just about make out on the camera there it's lightly sanded you're not going mad with that just be aware that you do get quite a bit of black dust and you're going to want to have to wipe all these kits down afterwards because the black dust is not going to help the process and um you know your hands are going to get black dust on them so if you're really worried about stuff like that put some gloves on it's just carbon it'll be fine so the next step before we start getting these um sections wet is to make a template so get a piece of a4 paper well it has to be a4 it needs to be big enough and just just put a little nick in it's the same width so it's the same width as what you target target in that I'm going to fold it. I think if I fold it, it'll, get, it'll be easier for me to follow the line. So I'm going to fold it using that nick. Oh, it's nice. And I should get a nice straight piece, a nice little line that I can cut down. What I'm trying to do is cut a strip. It's the same width as the area that I'm going to wrap. This is going to become the template that I use to cut my cloth with. Now, with these wraps, it's recommended that, they, that you go around twice. So, wrap it all the way around once, come back around, find, find where, um, so it's just there, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's just there, I can see it on my eyes. And so again, I'm just going to just nick it. And then I can cut that off. So now what I've got is a little template. 
mean, it's not perfect, it's not a straight edge or anything, don't worry about it too much. Looking at is just double checking it now, it's off, make sure I haven't made a mistake. There you go. Right then, guys, sort of go through the kit that you get and the kit that I've got and the kit that I'm using so you can decide if it's what you want to get or if you want to try something else. This is the carbon matting. This is actually pure fibres of carbon woven together in a mat. That's all it is. All, each fibre is something like five times thinner than the human hair and they're matted together. I googled it and found these things out. This is the last little bit left over from the first kit that I bought. And with the first kit that I bought, I repaired four large pole sections, number six is on my poles. Um, and I repaired four of them, and this is what was left at the end of repairing four. Um, I found at the end of the using that that I still had plenty of resin left. So you get some resin. And some hardener and you can see there I've still got plenty plenty left so I didn't really want to buy another whole kit this kit cost 30 pounds so what I found was the company the company that um, I purchased from you could just buy another little roll of carbon you get uh, a meter of it so it's a meter of that same so that's what I've done so normally when you buy the kit or a kit you'll get the resin and you'll get that you get lots of little things like scrapers, which I didn't actually use. I don't know what that's for. Mixing stick. You get some gloves. You get this, which is very important, finishing tape. Again, this is what's left over from the previous one. So I'm hoping there's enough there. It looks like there is. There's enough there for me to do my top kits with. So I didn't need any more of this. But again, you can buy this separately. So if you found out that this ran out, you can just buy this. Or you can buy that. Or you can buy the other. And you can just keep topping up. The other things that the kit came with was a little tub for mixing the resin in, but obviously I used that. And um, now it's gone. And it also came with a brush, which also is now set solid because I didn't clean it. So that's also gone. But I'll, I'll provide my own. What I've done is I'll clean. You only need a very small amount of resin. So a little yogurt pot there. I'm just going to use that. And then I'll just use an, uh, a little skanky little brush that I'll find down the shed. I've got, as long as it's clean, that'll be fine. So... Where did I get my kit from? Um, I got my kit from polerepairs.co.uk. This is the instructions that you get. Um, it was £30 and that was enough to do, like I say, four, um, four major repairs on my pole. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, you know, if I if I was starting with this kit now and I was doing them ten top kits, I would still have some left over, um, and I'm probably going to get what's looking like because that looks like it's quite nice for one wrap. I'm probably going to get one, two, three, four, five, maybe even six out of that. So you know, one kit we've done four large pole repairs, potentially six top kits. So I'm you know I'm going to definitely have some stuff left over at the end. So for thirty quid. I think that's a pretty good, you know, pretty good value for money. Um, I might get one of the repaired kits out later, uh, one of the repaired sections out at the end of this video just to show you how it went. Or I'll put a, maybe I'll just put a picture on at the end. Um, I'm not plugging the company, by the way. I'm not so I'm not affiliated with them. I'm nothing to do with them. There are other companies out there that do very very similar kits. They're all around about the 30 35 pound bracket. I'm just telling you about this one because this is the only one I've used. So I don't see any point in trying to say, you know, this isn't the best or is the best. It, it's worked for me so far. And we'll see. This is the first time I've ever done a side puller. So we'll see how it goes with the side puller. And we'll see whether we actually find a use for this. So we're going to mix up our on and our resin. Now it's a three to one ratio with this particular product. Um, three parts resin to one part hardener. Um, if you buy a different kit, it'll have different ratios. So you know. Now I don't know if I didn't know whether that was by volume or by weight. So I assumed that it was by. I did it by weight because I felt that was easier to to manage. You could just do a cap full of each, but you, you'd have to use a cap off a different bottle. 
because um, if you mix them together, they would set in the they would set. So we've got four grams, four grams of um, harder in there. So we need three times that of um, resin, which got five grams now. Yeah, five grams must have just dropped over to five grams. So we need three times that, which is fifteen. So we have to put. So we now want to put. We're going to keep adding the hardener until we get to twenty. Five plus fifteen is twenty. Sorry, not the hardener, the resin. And this, I can tell you already, is way more than we're going to need for this first stage. It's taking my time because the scales do seem to be taking their time to settle down. I don't want to waste any. There we are. Should we go and get me a bit of cloth quickly? Just wiping up the uh, bottles before I put the lids back on. Now with any of these sort of resins, it's really important that you mix thoroughly. I'm assuming this is an epoxy resin, I don't know. I haven't given any clues away, but all these things need to be mixed very thoroughly. You need to make sure if you've got any dips or cross moss got a slightly uneven bottom in my pot that you really get in there and make sure that hardener mixes. Now, there's no point in trying to rush this mixing process. Now this stuff's not going to be, this stuff doesn't set for 8, 10, 12, even longer hours. I'm not sure off the top of my head exactly without reading the instructions again. And we're, we're going to apply this and we're going to have to let it sort of go tacky for three hours before we can even start doing our next task. So no point rushing this, no point. If you get this, if you rush this and don't mix it properly, then you'll either have stuff that takes forever to set, doesn't set, or never sets quite as hard as it should because you've got pockets of hardener and pockets of resin and you want a nice nice mixture of the two so i'm going to carry on mixing this for another minute or two right so we're back for the next phase everyone still mixing but we're now looking not we know you know really nice and homogenized mix like i was saying you can't overdo that wipe your mixing stick off because you're going to want to reuse this Wipe it off, put it to one side out of the way. Don't put it on a, not on a surface that you like because there's always a chance you could stick to it if it dries. Now, what I didn't say before was this yogurt pot was thoroughly clean. We don't want any yogurt in there or anything that can contaminate that. And I said before, I was going to get my skanky old brush from down the shed. I mean, it's not that bad a brush. It's clean. It's not had any paint on it. Last thing I want is like if I painted this with some white paint. Start putting on that there, there. A little bit of white comes out into there. It's going to ruin it all and just be rubbish. And it's not, you know, who knows what effect it's going to have on the resin. So just just get a clean brush. You, know, you can get them for peanuts. Now what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we want to apply in a coat in between the two bits of tape. doesn't matter if we slightly overlap onto the tape. But that's where we want to apply it. And it's super light. Like I was saying, all of that there, or that little tiny bit there, we're going to have loads left over, trust me, because we don't want too much on here. We are applying it and then I'll try to spread it a little as well. You don't want it to be running around. What you've got to imagine is, think how thin these pole sections are when you look down at the end of them. Sorry about the noise in the background. That's my dog. I decided to jump on his bed. Um... <clears throat> So we're going to add a couple of layers of carbon, but they're going to be super thin. And that's what we want. We don't want a big, thick, chunky, big step. So why would we need loads of resin? That's not what we want because the resin, the resin will be impregnating itself into that carbon matting. And we'll have carbon and resin, which is what carbon fiber material is. 
that if we've got loads and loads of resin, we'll end up with it being really, really thick and that'll be rubbish. So that's all you've got to do. Now, it's hard to see if you see from there, but it's just wet. It's not thickly coated on, it's just wet. Now the plan is, I'll just put that one back over there to dry. Hopefully the dog won't jump on it. And I'll do another one with you whilst I'm talking. So the so the plan is for this now is we're gonna leave we have to leave this um, resin to start to set. It'll go tacky to the touch, which I'll show you when we get to that stage. According to the paperwork, pendant, it's dependent upon temp room temperature. Obviously, it also depends on how thick you applied it. And probably also depends on the ratio of um, resin to hardener that you've put on. But again, there's nothing there. We've, we've literally tickled it. Now, I feel like the amount of resin that we've mixed is a waste. I'll do one more for you now and I'll switch off. I'm just applying a little dabble on that brush and then I'm really making that go quite a long way before I apply any more. And what we'll have to do is we'll have to come back and look at this in an hour. And what happened when I was doing the big sections was if any of the ones that I had put a little bit too much on, you, you start to get a, a drip forming at the bottom. And all I did was rotated those around 180 degrees and then just tapped them again with the brush. But I feel like I'm applying even less this time than I did last time because I've learned from that. Right guys, I'm back. And here we have a carbon strip. This is the one from the first, this is the off cut from the end of the first batch that I bought. And you can see our template there is going to fit on there a few times. So what I'm going to do is just Start by cutting the first one. I'm going to give I'm going to give myself a little bit of wastage on this first one just because the end looks a bit tatty. So there's nothing holding this weave together. It's just dry weave. So it cut, if you start pulling and twisting it around too much, it starts to lose that nice square shape that it has. And you can see there that I've kind of veered off i don't want that i don't want that really it wouldn't look as nice as if i tried to stick try to go down one line so i'm just going to try and do that on this particular one turn it around that way i might be able to see the line that i'm cutting down a bit better So treat them very delicately. Take your time. You're gonna you're gonna be stuck with this repair for quite a few years if if you're lucky. So I'm just gonna again you've got these edges that are frayed. I'm just gonna trim them off. And now I'm gonna trim up the edge of my template. across the top of my template first piece done if you have little bits hanging off don't start pulling at things my experience worked it out the hard way just trim it off on sharp scissors if you start to get this happening uh, where are we at? see here so that's to come away that's just going to be afraid. There's nothing you can do about it. Once it's gone, it's gone. So you're trying to avoid as much of that as possible. I think it has um, a huge impact on the strength. It's just the visuals. I'll cut another one more. You guys are watching, and then and I'll leave you in peace. Looks like it's quite twisted, but. Uh, 
you know, not being precision. No extra marks here if I'm getting everything within a millimetre. No one's going to notice. And it's not going to make any difference to the finished job. Again, all these taggings, don't pull at them. Just snip. Okay. Right, guys, final, final stage. What we're going to do is take the masking tape off. And then I'm going to get me two new, two nice new fresh bits of masking tape. I'm going to just stick them out of shot, but they're stuck to the edge of the table, so that I can grab them when I need them in a minute. Important that, important that, remember that. We've already got some resin, another batch of resin mix we've mixed exactly the same amount as we did last time, and again it will be too much. We've got tacky see that lift the pole on my fingertips tacky it's sticking to me so all i've got to do is get my material wrap it around there and this is why we let that go tacky because by letting that go tacky we can drop it on get it started just use your brush this brush has probably got a little bit of resin on it from the this is because this isn't the first one i've, I've done i did the other i did some of the other ones first and once it starts gripping, you can gently, a little tiny bit of tension, you have to be so careful how much you give it, because you get a nice tight wrap then. So you come round to the almost a full wrap. And once you come round to the full wrap, you want to add a bit more resin. All we're doing is dipping, dipping it in, a tiny little bit on the brush there, and just put it on over that edge because that really wants to sit up half the time and then now instead of pulling on it just use the brush to tap it down and just use the brush again I can see the resin moving around with it, so I'm not adding any more resin at this stage because I know there's plenty there. A bit more resin this time. And you the, always add the resin underneath. Because we want it to come up from underneath and we'll make that happen in a minute when we put the tape on the top, it'll push the... the, the the pressure of the tape is going to force all of that resin into all the gaps between all of these fibres. Give us a beautiful smooth finish. Famous last words, but that's what's going to happen. And there's a few odd bits sticking up. I tend to suggest just trimming them with a... Seems to have one to stick up, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit more resin on it, just to try and hold it down. Right, not overly worried if it is. Now we apply this tape as the final measure. The inside of the tape, the side of the tape that's towards the reel, is the side of the tape that's got the special coating on it, so that has to go towards the pole. So it has to go on that way, otherwise it will, it will stick. After it all dries, it won't come off. Take it down to the left of the repair. And notice that we're going to be wrapping this in the same direction as we wrapped the carbon fire, the carbon in so that as we roll over, we'll be flattening it. We don't want to be going the other way where we might be lifting it up. Got quite a bit of tension is required. And what you're doing is you're just slowly working your way down the pole, making sure that you're always overlapping the last the last coil each coil overlaps the previous coil by half so reminds me of when I used to wrap the handlebars on my old racer on my old racer with the insulation tape the squeaky noise that you can hear is the tape squeaking through my fingers because I'm 
because I'm squeezing it tightly and putting a lot of tension in that tape. And when I'm clear of the repair, get my finger on top of the tape. This is why we had this masking tape prepared for earlier, so we're going to have to try and mess about getting it off the roll whilst we're holding everything under tension. Just get that on there. And if you look carefully, you can see that some of that resin is squeezed out through the tape edge. That's good, because that means we've we've got more resin in there than we needed, which means the excess has been pushed out and we've filled all of those voids with resin. But we know we've gone as thin and as tight as we can because we've you know we've squeezed that tape on just wiping off the excess just so it don't make a mess now we're gonna to have to leave that come back to it tomorrow in sort of 18 20 hours or something hello might only be a few seconds for you but it's been 18 hours since um since i last touched these sections i've just brought them down to my shed which is why the you know the scenery's changed because we're going to look at drilling a hole so we can put the bush in but first of all we've got to take the wrap off and see what sort of finish we've got so it's going to start simple just take the tape off and just slowly unwrap it as you can see it comes off really easy which is good means i've wrapped it around the right way just as they said it would a bit of cricking and cracking but that's fine that's nothing i watched the videos that the suppliers of this kit did and theirs was the same so nothing i can't see anything there that's different to how theirs is there's a little bit of a step there where we've gone from blank to resin I'll probably rub that down because that might catch my finger some of the other, I've, I've, this is the last kit out of the five and some of the others had that had those most of them didn't but there's a couple that just need a little rub down but you don't want to rub them down too much because otherwise you lose your nice shiny finish I'll take that let's move on well, let, let, I'll tell you what we'll do instead. We'll get a bit of... We've got a bit of, what, 180 grit. So that's quite coarse compared to what we use for rubbing the sections down. And just see if we can... Um, where's that edge gone? There he is. Just see if we can rub that edge smooth. And you want him smooth so that, um, you know, in the heat of battle with a calf or I'm trying to win a match. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Trying to win a match. Trying to win a match in the last half an hour and I'm throwing the kit around. I don't want to catch my finger on a sharp edge and cut myself. I might be six foot three, but I'm a big girl, really. So there we are. That's done it. That now has got no sharp edges on it. I can do that bit as well while I'm here. It doesn't really matter too much, but there we are. Look at that. Right, we've moved on. You just watch me unwrap these kits they're now nice and smooth i now need to get a hole in there so that i can put my bush in i'm using the map ptfe side puller bushes they're called and you need a seven mil hole which is clearly explained in the instructions and the instructions show a seven mil drill going straight in and this is now the fifth top kit that i've drilled and I have drilled the last two straight through with a 7mm drill. One went quite well, the other one went not so well. It did, I mean, it wasn't a disaster and it's in and it's fine and it'll work. But the way I'm going to show you now, I think will be the most consistent way of doing it. It's, it, may, it takes a little bit longer to do, but I think it's time well, well spent. So let's crack on with that and I'll show you what I think now, having done it four different ways. Uh, I think I've sussed what might be the simplest way to do it. And I'm trying to do that. I mean, yes, you can get these Dremel. I've got some of these Dremel tools. That grind a little bit at a time and you can do that. And that will, you know, almost undoubtedly. If you've got a Dremel, you can try that because you won't have any issues with the splintering or anything then. But not everybody's got a Dremel. Not everybody's got, you know, not everybody's got a Dremel tool or a Dremel bit. But you mean, you could put that in your drill, but then you go out and buy something else if you ain't got one. This is for the every, everyday man, just trying to, you know, this video is aimed at the everyday man, not, not everybody's got that sort of gear. So let's move on without me, stop me chundering on. Bit of Tipex. Want to mark a little Tipex dot in the middle, right in the middle of the, um, 
of the wrap. The wraps are 40 the wraps are 40 40 mil wide, the ones that I did. That's just coincidence, I didn't measure them. Well, I copied them from previous. Um I copied them from kits I already had. That had probably been done by a professional, which I um purchased sec purchased the kit second hand and I just wanted all my kits to match. So two and a half mil drill. That's what I'm using as the pilot. I'm using that as my guide. It's not precision. If we're a little bit left or right, it doesn't matter. What really matters is that we're on right on the top of the section, in the middle of the section at top dead centre, and that we go down as square as we can by eye. We must also not put any downward pressure on the drill bit. Let the weight of the drill drill and don't run the drill continuously, just blitz it. If you start putting downward pressure on, you'll suddenly snatch, fly through the fly through the section and then you'll be damaging the other side of the pole section. You don't want to do that. You'll, you'll feel it go through, it might even drop a little bit because of the weight of the drill. There you go, you see, you see it went and what happens is, because as it comes through, the drill tries to pull itself down, so even those blips it tries to pull through, so you've got to be so careful. Okay, simple. Now what I found then is you get your 7mm drill, make sure it's 7mm, mine says 7mm on it, but if you don't you have to measure it or buy a 7mm one. And then I would normally just try and drill that, but again, you saw how the little drill snatched and tried to pull. The big drill's got more leverage and more power, so even with a little blip it can cause an issue. So I think you're better off just spinning it in by hand. And you can hear and see how much material doing it by hand is. Put a little bit of downward force on, the weight of the drill isn't enough now. So you do want to be, you know, not, you're not leaning on it, you're not trying to break any speed drilling records. Or set any set any records for that matter. Just let that go on. If you've got a nice sharp drill like this, it won't take long. There's not a lot of material there. It's already nearly through. See? Just got a couple of persistent little bits of material. Just keep going. The biggest problem comes there. So when you're nearly through, and the drill now, instead of when you're turning it, instead of it cutting, it seems to pull itself in, like that. What I, send, what I will suggest you do then is keep a downward force on it and run it backwards. And it should clear those. Again, run it backwards. And if that's not working like this, there, oh, it went. Okay, so what I, what I did last time, which looks like I'm going to have to do again this time, is put the drill back in the drill, chuck the drill bit back in the drill. Run the drill backwards. It's not going to bite, it's not going to pull you in then. It's gonna, if anything, it's going to try and push you out. Which means you're working nicely against it. And it'll clear the hole, that last little bit of hole, and you'll get a perfectly round hole. That's not that is that is you know nice and we didn't get that bit of tipex that white mark is not crack or anything it's just tipex um that's not what we had with the last time i did it when i tried to um i tried to drill it through it's just too harsh it didn't take long to do that did it really it ain't worth it ain't worth the risk for saving yourself 30 seconds wrap yourself a bit of Sandpaper, whatever you've got. I mean, this is 180 grit. It don't have to be 180 grit. It could be whatever you've got. Around a smaller drill, just so that you can get it in there. Wiggle it around at different angles so that you get in all the corners and all the edges of the hole. And any loose strands of carbon. You can sort of run it across the hole a little bit like that. Don't go too far around the hole, otherwise you'll end up making it all dull and ugly looking. That stray piece of carbon there. He's not coming out. Blow that out. We're nearly done, guys. All we need to do is take our bush, 
out of the packet. And these things are pretty self-explanatory. Sorry if I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but I'm, you know, more tippets on there. I'm aiming this at everybody, so just bear with me if this is too obvious for you. That's got to go into, that's got to, when it's in position, it's got to sit like that inside the kit with this bottom piece, which is the bottom piece hasn't got a white cap on it. Top piece has got, oops, top piece has got a white, um, oh my God, it's got a white end on it and the other end's just got like a blue end. So you want the blue end facing towards the end of the top kit so that the elastic so that the elastic can go in there and out there towards towards the bush at the end of your pole which means you've got to go like that and then just guide it round i know that sound might seem obvious to some of you but there'll be people out there that are glad of that little bit of information so if it's a nice little tight fit like that when you put that first bit in with these map ones what i found is that means you've got it just about right because then it goes loose for this second section and then it just clicks in for the third final bit and then what I'm going to, what I tend to do is I have a look down there just to make sure that it's in the right orientation and it hasn't twisted whilst I was, because it's really hard to tell if circles twi twisting visually, but it's fine. And if it's not, you can pull it back out, pop it back in how you want. Right then guys, that's the first five done. The other five are still in the house waiting for the um, wrap to dry, but there, I just thought I'd show you the five done. And... Um, just have a think about how much money you're spending on getting your side pullers done. I've, by the end of this, I will have done 10 side pullers. 10 side pullers. The material for the carbon was 30 quid. The pullers, the map ones are the cheapest ones about. I got all 10 pullers for £27 something. So let's call it 28 quid. That's it, postage as well. You probably get them slightly cheaper if you've got them straight from your tackle shop if he's got that many in stock so let's call that 58 quid for 10 top kits five pound 80 a top kit you won't find a professional doing them for five pound 80 a top kit but the caveat to that is you won't find a professional who will probably who will probably offer you something that looks as rough as that does you know it's not per, it's not uh, it's not professional finish quality but these these side pullers will function as well as a professional one it's just that you haven't got the finish so if you were paying good money that's what you're paying good money for so if you're the sort of person that just likes to have a go at stuff it's got plenty of time on your hands have a go at it if you're the sort of person that's not very um practical not really interested in doing stuff for yourself go get a professional to do it because you'll get a better finish anyway um Hopefully somebody who was thinking about doing this has now got the confidence to say, yeah, I can do that. And maybe somebody who's not done it before might do a video and say, John, you were rubbish. Look how good mine turned out. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And um, stay tuned for some more videos. Cheers.